Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Boomi's Out of This World event. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got two great guests here, Chris McNabb, CEO of Boomi, and Ed Bukowski, SVP and Head of Products, talking about hyper automation and the future of connectivity. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Look, great to see you. John, it's great to see you again as well. Looking forward to the next in-person one. I, I miss the in-person events. You guys have had great events and a lot of action happening. Love the big news of going out on your own direction, big financing, change of control, all that good stuff happening. Industry's growing. Chris, this is a big move. You know, the industry's changing. Can you give us some context to, you know, what's going on in automation and connectivity? Because iPass, which you guys have pioneered, have been a big part of cloud, cloud scale. And now we're seeing next generation things happening. Data, automation, edge, modern application development, all happening. Set some context, what's going on? Yeah, John, listen, it, it's, a, it's a great time to be in, in our space at this point in time. Our customers at the end of the day are looking to create what we announced at last year's thing called integrated experiences, which is a combination of user engagement, awesome connectivity, and making sure high quality data goes through that experience and providing 21st century experiences. And we're right at the heart of that. We're, our platform really drives all of the services that are needed there. But what our customers really need and what we're here to focus on today at Out of This World is to make sure that we have the world's best cut connectivity capabilities and process automation engagement of constituents to really do what they want to do where they want to do. So a lot of big moves happening. What's the story? Take us through the story. I mean, you guys have a transaction with big sum financing, setting up this intelligence connectivity and automation approach. Take us through the story. What happened? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the Boomi business was sold outside of Dell uh, and that deal closed. We are now owned by two top tier private equity firms, FP and TPG. Uh, that sale is completed and now we are ready to unleash the Boomi business on this market. I think it's a great, it's a great transaction for Dell. It's a great transaction for FP, TPG, but most specifically, it's really a world-class transaction for the Boomi business, the Boomi customer base, as well as the Boomi employee. So I really look at this as a win, 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 and sets us up for really going after this one. Yeah, and there's a huge wave coming. Ed, you're seeing like the, the big wave coming. It's just like, no need to debate it, it's here. It's cloud 2.0, whatever you want to call it. It's scale. IT has completely figured out that not only is re-platforming in the cloud, but you got to be in the cloud refactoring. This is driving the innovation. And, and this is really, I see where you guys are leading so to share with me, what is hyper-automation? What does that actually mean? So, so what hyper-automation really is, is intelligent connectivity and automation. So our customers have been doing this. Um, it's very specifically related to taking workflows, taking automation within the business. It's been around for a long time anyway, but adding AI and ML to it. So as you continue to automate your business, you gain more and more steam and you get more and more productivity out of the folks within the organization or productivity from your end consumers. So Chris, tell us more about this hyper automation because you guys have a large installed base. Take us through some of the numbers of the customer base and where the dots are connecting as they look at the new IT landscape as it transforms. Yeah, John, great question. You know, when I when I talk to, you know, as many of our 18,000 customers worldwide as I can get to, uh, you know, what they're saying very clearly is their IT landscape to be more complicated, more distributed, more siloed, and it has more data. And as you, as you work through that problem, what they're trying to accomplish is they're trying to engage their constituents in a 21st century web, however they want, whether it be mobile, web, portals, chatbots, old fashioned telephones. And in doing that in that complicated area is extraordinarily difficult. So that, that's the pervasive problem that Boomi is purpose built to help solve. And our customers start out sometimes with just great connectivity. The hyper automation is where the real value and that's where your constituents see a complete difference in how I interoperate with the enterprise. So first of all, I love the word hyper automation because it reminds me of hyperscale, which, you know, look at the, the Amazons and the, and the cloud players. You know, that kind of game has kind of evolved. I mean, you know, the old joke is what inning are we in, right? And, and, I, and to use a baseball metaphor, I think it's a double header and, and game one is won by the cloud. Right, so Amazon wins game one. Great. Game two is all about data. You guys, this is core to booming. I want to get your thoughts on this because data is the competitive advantage. But if you look at the pandemic 
and the stories that we're reporting on, and this reinvent specifically to be a big story, the refactoring in the cloud is a big strategic effort, not just replatforming, refactoring in the cloud. So this is really where you guys are, I think, skating with the puck is. Am I getting it right? Can you just share that vision? Yeah, you know, John, from a vision perspective, I think, I think the pandemic has really accelerated uh, people's expectations. You know, they need to be more nimble, more flexible. And because they had a fair amount in the cloud, now they have to understand what is the next tier? What is the next generation offerings that we put together, tie together and connect? And it's not only connecting systems, apps, databases, and clouds, you're connecting people, processes, and devices. So we're going to have a great story here at Out of This World about how we connect biocentric best to a video system, to a network monitoring hub to protect the officer safety in Amsterdam in real time. We can deploy officers to location all automatically. All decisions are automatic. All locations, cameras automatically, all automatically. And that's only possible when you think about next generation technology that Boomi provides, next generation capabilities by the other providers in that solution. Ed, before we get to the product announcements for the event, I just want to get your reaction to that. Obviously, in the cloud, you can refactor, you got data, you got latency issues. These are all kind of go away when you start thinking about integrating it all together. What's your reaction to refactoring as the next step? Yeah, so my regular, I mean, exactly what Chris said, but as our customers are moving to the cloud, um, they're not choosing anymore just one cloud. Um, it is a multi cloud, it's multi dimensional problem, right? You've got multi-cloud, you've got hybrid cloud, you have edge devices, et cetera. And our technology just naturally puts us in the space um, to do that. And, and based on what we've seen with our customers, we actually have, we've connected over 189,000 different devices, application endpoints, data endpoints, um, et cetera, to people. And we're seeing that grow 44% year on year. So we're seeing that explosion in helping customers. Um, and we just want to accelerate that and help them react to, to these changes as quickly as they possibly can. And a lot of it doesn't require, you know, massive uplift to our technology. We've been lucky enough to be visionaries that uh, with our, our deployment technology and being able to embrace this, this new environment that's coming up, we're, we're right at the forefront of this and enabling this for customers. Yeah, I love the intelligence saying, love hyper automation. Okay, let's get into the product announcements of Out of This World event. What are some of the announcements and share with us the key highlights? Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, we, we, we've announced a vision in our connectivity. So I talked about the 189,000 uh, applications that we, data endpoints, et cetera, that, that our customers are connecting today. And they're moving very, very rapidly with that. Um, and it's no longer about name connections and having these fixed hard coded connects to applications. You need to be able to react intelligently, pick the next endpoint and connect very quickly and bring that into your ecosystem. So we've got this vision towards a connectivity service that we're working on that will basically normalize that connectivity across all of the applications that are plugging into Boomi's uh, iPaaS ecosystem and allow customers to get up and running very quickly. So I'm really excited about that. Um, the other thing we, we announced is Boomi Event Streams. So in order to, to complete this, uh, we can't just, we've been on this EDA journey, event-driven architecture for the last couple of years and great embracing an open ecosystem. But we found that in order to go faster for our customers, it's very, very important that we bring this into Boomi's um, iPaaS platform. Our partnerships in this area are still very important for us, but there is an avenue that our customers are demanding that, hey, bring this into your platform, but we need to move faster with this, and our new Boomi event streams will allow them to do that. We also recently just announced the, the Boomi Discover catalog. So this is the this is a vision, this is an ongoing vision for us. We're, we're building up into a marketplace where Customers and partners can all participate, whether it's inside of a customer's ecosystem or partners or Boomi, et cetera, offering you know, these quick onboarding solutions for their customers. So in an, we will learn intelligently as people add these solutions to help customers onboard and build and connect these systems faster. So that's kind of how they all come together for us in a, in a hyper automation scenario. So the last thing too, is we are working on um, RPA as a last mile connectivity. That's what we see RPA as today. Um, you know, gone are going to be the days of having RPA at a desktop perspective where you have to have someone manually run that, although it's RPA. Um, our runtime technology extends the desktops and edges today anyway. So we are going to bring RPA technology into the iPaaS platform uh, as we move forward here so that our customers can enjoy the benefits of that as well. That's real quick. I was going to ask about the event stream, but I love this RPA angle. Tell me more about how that impacts. Is that's that's I think pretty big. 
You, what's the impact of when you bring uh, robotic process on our RPA into iPass? What's the, what's the impact of the customer? The impact of the customer is that we believe the customers can really enjoy true cloud when it comes to RPA technology. Today, most of the RPA technologies, like I said, are deployed at a desktop, and they are they are manually um, run by some folks. It helps speed up the business user and, and add some value there. But our technology will truly bring it to the cloud and allow that connectivity of what an R, a, a robotic uh, process automation solution would be doing, and can tap into the iPaaS ecosystem and, and extend and connect that data up into the cloud or, or even other on-premises systems that a customer may need to connect. Okay, so on the event streams that you, did, you guys announced, obviously it's the best part of the embedded uh, event-driven architecture you guys have been part of. What is, why is that important for customers? Can you just take a minute to explain why event streams uh, and why event-driven approaches are important? Because customers need access to the data real time. So, so there's two reasons why it's very important for customers. One is event-driven architectures are on the rise. Um, in order to truly scale up an environment, if you're talking tens of millions of transactions, you need to have an event driven architecture in place in order to manage that scale. Uh, so you, you don't have any message loss or any of those types of things. Um, so it's important that we continue to invest as we continue to scale up with our customers and they scale up their environments with us. The other reason it's very important for us to bring it into our ecosystem or within our platform is that our customers enjoy the luxury of having an integrated experience themselves as they're building you know, in intelligent connectivity and automation solutions within our platform. So to ask a customer to go work with a third party technology versus enjoying it in an integrated experience itself is why we want to bring it in and, and have them get their projects done much faster. I really think you guys are on something because it's a partnership world. Ecosystems are now everywhere. There's ecosystems because everything's a platform now that's evolving from tools to yep. platforms. And it's not a one platform rules the world. This is the benefit of how the cloud's emerging almost a whole nother set of cloud capabilities. I love this vision and you start to see that. And you guys did talk about this thing called connectivity marketplace. And what is that? Is that a, uh, is that a place where people are sharing and is that a partnership angle? I know there's a lot of partners are connecting with each other and they want to have it all automated. How does this all play in? Can you just quickly explain that? Yeah, so in the last year we launched, we actually launched an open source community around connectors and that sort of thing. We invested pretty heavily in our SDK. Uh, we've seen quite a big uptake in the ecosystem of them building specific connectors as well as solutions. Our partners are very excited about um, partnering with us and co go to markets and those sorts of things that they can offer solutions to their customers on a marketplace. So, so we are um, reacting to the, the popular demand that we have from our partners and customers where they say, hey, we, we'd love to participate in this marketplace. We'd love to be able to work with you and publish solutions that we're delivering to our customers. Um, so, so we're fulfilling that vision on behalf of our customers and partners. You know, Chris, when you look at the cloud native uh, ecosystem at the high level, you're seeing open source driving a big part of it. Large enterprises, large customers are moving to that next level of modern application development. They're partnering, right? They're going to outs outsource and partner some, some edge components. Maybe bring someone else over here, have a supplier. Everything's codified now in the cloud, AKA DevOps meets you know, uh, business logic. So this seems to be validated. How do you see this evolving? How does this iPaaS kind of environment just become the environment? I mean, it seems to me that that's what's happening. What's your reaction to the to that trend? Well, I think I think as iPaaS has evolved, one, we, we, we've extended the breadth of our iPaaS dramatically. We're not an integration platform. We're, we take the broadest definition of the word integration. I guess I'll say it that way. You know, integrating people Connecting people is just as important as connecting cloud applications. So, you know, that, that's part one in terms of the vision of what it is. Two is going to be the importance of speed and productivity. It's critically important that people can figure out how to reconnect because endpoints are exploding. You have to connect things extraordinarily quickly in fractions of the amount of time that it ever took. And coding code is just not the way that that works. You have to abstract it. You have to make it simpler, low code, no code environments, configuration based environments, make it simpler for more people outside of IT to actually use the solutions. So that's where these platforms become much more pervasive within the enterprise, solve a much bigger problem, and they solve it at speed, John. So, you know, the vision for this is just to continue to accelerate that. You know, when we got started here, things used to take months and months, you know, came down to weeks, came down to days, it's down to hours. 
We're looking at seconds to, to define connectivity. Point to something, hit an easy button, let's get connected and get working. That's our vision for intelligent connectivity. Okay, so we're talking about hyper automation and the future connectivity, that's the, that's the segment here. What is that future connectivity? Take me through that. How does that evolve? I can see a marketplace. I can see an ecosystem. I see people connecting with uh, partners and applications and data. What is the future of connectivity? Yeah, the, the vision, right, for connectivity, and, and they talk about our connectivity as a service, but you know, you have to think about it as connectivity instead of connectors, like an end, you know, a thing that talks to an end. And what we look at is like, you should be able to point to an endpoint, pick a cloud app, any cloud application. They have an API, fine with Swagger. I should be able to automatically, programmatically, and dynamically, anytime I want, go interrogate that, browse it, hit an easy button, and now I've established connectivity. And the amount of take, and the amount of time it's taken me to explain it, you should almost be able to work through it and be connected to that and talking to that endpoint. We're going to bring that kind of connectivity, dynamic, generated, automatic connectivity into our platform. That's the vision. And people are connecting easier from a product standpoint. Yeah, this should be literally plug and play, so to speak, old old term, but really seamlessly automated play, automate and play, kind of just connect. Yes, absolutely. And, and while Chris was talking there, I also realized a uh, customer to be named, but one of the during one of the interviews coming up to Out of This World, the customer was describing us today already the capabilities that we have, where he as a CTO was able to get an integration up and running before his team was able to write the requirements for, for the integration. So, so those are the types of things we're looking to continue add to, to add to. And we're also you know, not asking our customers to make a choice between scale up and scale down. Um, it's very important to, to, to the customer, for our customers to realize whether the problem's really big or really small, we need platforms there to get it done fast and in, in a secure way. I see a lot of people integrating in the cloud with each other, themselves, other apps, seeing huge benefits uh, while still working on premise across multiple environments. So this kind of new operating model is evolving. Yep. Some people call it refactoring, whatever term you want to use. It's a change of, of, of value creation, it creates new value. Um, so as you guys go out, uh, Chris, take us through your vision on next steps, okay? You're, you're going to be independent. You got the uh, financing behind yep. you. Um, Dell got a nice deal. You guys are going forward. What's next for Booby? Well, listen, John, we, we, the, you know, we couldn't be more excited having the opportunity to truly unleash, you know, th this business on the market. And, you know, our, our employees are super excited. Our customers are going to benefit. Our customers are going to get a lot more product in, in innovation every single day. We, we already put out 11 releases a year. There's literally a hundred different features we put in that product. We're looking to double down on that and really accelerate our path towards those things we're, that we're talking about today. Engagement with our customers gets to get much better. You know, doubling down on customer success, people support people, PSO in the field gets us engaging our customers in so many different ways with so much more folks that, you know, when we partner with our customers, we care about their overall success. And this investment really gives us so many avenues now to double down on and making sure that their journey with us and their journey towards their success as a business and how we can help them is something we help them with. You guys got a lot of trajectory and experience and knowledge in this industry. I think it's really kind of great position to be in uh, and as you guys take on this next wave, Chris McNabb, CEO of Boomi, Ed Mikoski, SVP Head of Product. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and this is theCUBE coverage of Boomi's Out of This World. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.